Resident Evil 4 is a beloved classic that reshaped the direction of the whole series when it first released in 2005. Now 18 years later, the game has been remade using Capcom's RE engine, offering fans and newcomers alike the chance to experience Leon's mission with updated graphics, improved gameplay mechanics and new features. And the game comes with an abundance of graphic settings to adjust. And today, as usual, we will see how well each graphic setting scales in terms of visuals and performance. So let's not waste any more time and let's get going. Similar to the demo, the game does pre-compile shaders during the loading and the initial cutscene, where you can see high CPU usage. Furthermore, the issue with stuttering while traversing is still present here. The game in a brief moment tries to load a lot of data, which causes a sudden spike in the VRAM usage, as you can see here, and that leads to stuttering. And if your VRAM usage is close to the limit, the game will crash during these moments like here. But fortunately, these moments are not frequent, and overall the game's performance is consistent. Now let's take a look at the graphics menu starting with image quality. Recently on RE Engine titles, especially Resident Evil games, TAA on PC always looks over sharp and unfortunately it's the same story here in RE4 Remake. And the game does not provide any tweakable sharpening slider. But what's even worse is the FSR implementation which suffers from a very blurry image that negatively impacts the quality. And there is no DLSS support. However, there is a mod that adds DLSS and many users on Steam have reported positive results compared to FSR and TAA. But for this video, due to the time constraint, I am unable to cover it. But I will leave the mod link down in the description and I'll make a video about it in the near future. And speaking of image quality, let's take a look at anti-aliasing setting. Here we can see 3% drop in performance by going from off to TAA and 4% to TAA plus FXAA. Regarding ray tracing, RE4 Remake only offers ray trace reflections and refractions. And unlike Resident Evil Village, there is no RTGI. And here you can see the difference between each option. Performance-wise on the RTX 3060 Ti, going from off to normal drop performance by 11% and same thing to high. Here I don't think ray tracing is transformative and overall I recommend turning it off because it has a big VRAM cost and this will likely cause a lot of crashes during those traversal moments I mentioned at the beginning of the video. The game offers a lot of texture quality options and here you can see the difference in quality and VRAM usage at 1440p between all options. And here is the difference between the highest option for low, mid and high. Now from my experience I encounter no problem or crashes playing with high 6GB at 1440p without ray tracing using the 8GB 36 CTI. Similar to texture quality, the game offers a lot of options for texture filtering. But as usual, this setting has negligible performance impact, because here going from bilinear, which is the lowest option, to the highest option 16x, drop performance by a small 2%. So here I recommend 16x. Mesh quality adjusts the geometric complexity of 3D models, as you can see here with these rocks. And as a result, it also affects the amount of LOD pop in. Performance wise going from low to medium drop FPS by 1% to high 3% and to max around 5%. Here I recommend high or max to minimize the amount of pop in. 
shadow quality is another setting that has a big impact on the VRAM. Here even in the menu, you can see how going from high to max significantly increased the VRAM usage. Visually both high and max looks more stable compared to low and mid. And performance wise going from low to mid cost 3%, to high 6% and to max 11%. Here I recommend high. Shadow Cache is one of the most impactful settings in the game. It has no visual impact, but on the performance side in a scene with a lot of dynamic shadows, turning on this setting can boost performance by a massive 58%. So don't turn off Shadow Cache and keep it on. Contact Shadows adds screen space shadows for small details on objects like here and performance wise going from off to on costs 6%. Here during normal gameplay contact shadows don't stick out visually and 6% is a high cost for that. That's why I recommend keeping this one off. In ambient occlusion we have three options, off, SCCO and AMD's fidelity effect CACAO. And here you can see the difference between all options. Performance wise going from off to SCCO cost 6% and to CACAO around 10%. So here I think SCCO does a fine job and can save you some performance compared to CACAO. So go for SCCO and don't turn off ambient occlusion. In volumetric lighting we have 6 options and as you can see here only high and max looks clean with less breakups. Performance wise in this scene going from off to min costs 1%, to low 2%, mid 3%, to high 6% and to max 17%. So here if you care about the quality of volumetrics I recommend high. But if you don't mind you can go for min and save some performance. Particle light and quality when using high makes particles interact with light. As you can see here with the raindrops and the spotlight of this boat. And performance wise there is no difference between low and high. So here I recommend high. Screen space reflections visually was always one of the weakest points of the RE engine. And here in Resident Evil 4 Remake it's the same story. SSR doesn't look good and performance wise enabling SSR costs up to 11%. So here the recommendation is particularly challenging because on one hand SSR looks broken and it's costly but on the other hand turning off SSR makes water in particular looks even worse. So it's up to you if you have enough performance to spare I recommend keeping SSR on but if not make sure it's the first setting you disable to get more performance. Subsurface scattering improve the way skin appears and it can cost 2% when going from off to on. So I recommend keeping it on. Hair strand is a new stitching aims at enhancing the quality of hair and fur rendering. And here especially when using high you can see how this stitching improve the quality of Leon's hair. But it's still not perfect especially when it comes to its shading. Here you can see when using high during rain, the hair looks dry and doesn't realistically interact with raindrops like off. Performance wise this is one of the most demanding settings because going from off to normal drop performance by 10% and to high 17%. So here I recommend keeping this one off. Now there are two settings I cannot compare, I'm talking about graphic dismemberment and corpse physics. Because first YouTube will not like this comparison and it's almost impossible to get identical footage for these settings. There are additional physics settings which pose the same problem but I've managed to compare some of them at least visually. Like the verse enemy animations where it's really hard to see the difference between off and on. or persistent corpse which affect the amount of enemy corpse in a scene as you can see here. Now I'm not 100% sure but all these physics settings can impact your CPU. So consider turning them off if you have a weaker CPU or you're facing some CPU performance issues. 
Let's move on to rain quality. Prior to its release, the game received substantial criticism regarding how rain looks during some gameplay trailers. Capcom promised a fix in the day one patch and it looks like the stitching was their solution because low here resembles how the rain looked before and high looks a lot better and more realistic and performance wise there is no impact so here go for high. The terrain setting controls ground tessellation which creates more depth in the ground and makes rocks and objects look more exposed when enabled. Performance wise going from off to on costs around 5% so here I recommend keeping this one on. The structural environment when enabled allows some objects in the game to be destroyed as you can see here and performance wise there is almost no difference between on and off so here I recommend keeping this one on. Next we have resource intense lighting quality. This one when using high allows search light sources to cast dynamic shadows as you can see here but it does not affect all lights. Some will still cast shadows whether the setting is on low or high, like here with the flashlight. And performance wise going from low to high costs around 4%, so here I recommend high. Moving on to resource intense effect quality. Here using high enables some visual effects when interacting with some surfaces, like here with this puddle, where we can see some ripples as well as footprints and performance wise going from low to high costs around 2% so here I recommend high. And finally let's take a look at some post processing effects starting with depth of field. Here during gameplay enabling depth of field costs around 5%. Moving on to bloom here enabling this effect costs 2%. And finally motion blur where enabling this one costs around 2%. Now based on everything we saw so far these are my recommended settings. Let's now quickly compare optimized settings with max preset without ray tracing. Here at the village which is one of the most intensive areas in the game we can see up to 28% boost to performance when going from max preset to optimized settings. All in all Resident Evil 4 Remake is a solid port. The game offers a lot of tweakable graphics and options and overall the performance is good despite some rare traversal stuttering and VRAM problems. Performance wise when it comes to tweaking settings, hair strands, volumetric lighting and shadow cache which should always be on represent the most impactful settings. And with that we arrive at the end. Thank you so much for watching and for your time. If you enjoyed the video leave a like, if not leave a dislike. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for any future videos and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.